Hi, this is Real World Audio, and today I'm looking at uh, Cube Audio drivers. These are full range drivers. I already introduced them a little bit, and now I'm going. I have actually picked a couple drivers for you, and I'm. Uh, these are from uh, the Cube Audio website. I took their uh, measurements that they did, and I'm going to talk about them to make uh, make them. Uh, to interpret them uh, so that you, you can work more with them and, and understand what these measurements are and what they are doing for you. So uh, for now let's just switch back to the Cube Audio website and uh, so this is the, the F8 uh, Magus. Uh, actually this is the one that I like the most and, uh, and all and I'm saying that because you always ask me, like, which is your favorite driver? And uh, and I cannot just give you a recommendation that that's my favorite driver, so that will work best for you, because it depends a lot on uh, what type of sound you want to hear from your loudspeaker. And this episode will be really about that I'm going to talk about uh, three different drivers or actually a couple more and um, and I'm going to give you uh, my perspective on it so based on the uh, measurements that that are published on the website so if we are scrolling down they have a, a very nice description detailed description of the drivers and they give you the measurements right, right there and they have also cabinet ideas and uh, there's somewhere here uh, let's see so I think here if we go there you are so there is the uh, SPL measurements and and I basically I copy pasted this from from their website and so that we can zoom in because if if I'm just staying here on the web page and I'm talking to you then in a few seconds it will scroll automatically to the next uh, slide so it, it will do like this now I'm doing it manually but but the website will do that automatically for you and that's fine when you view it but if I'm going to talk about it and then mid-sentence it's going to go away so that's why I did what I did uh, so, so staying here, uh, oops, what's happening? Let's come back. So basically why I am talking to you about these Cube Audio drivers, I am talking to you about them because many of you asked uh, me to, to share my thoughts about it. And as a disclaimer, I have to add that I never heard any Cube Audio loudspeaker and never heard any of these drivers so I really cannot comment on how they sound so that awaits you to, to share your experience with Cube Audio and it will be you to uh, validate or uh, disagree with uh, what I'm going to share about my analysis of these drivers and, and, and let's see if, if you agree with what I'm sharing, then I think that that's something really good. And uh, if not, then, then we will we'll discuss what's going on, why are your experiences different from what the uh, published data would suggest us. And uh, so basically, uh, my main reason to to analyze these, uh, uh, these data for you uh, is that you learn how this is done, what these squiggles tell you about these drivers and I'm going and, and so far I have already presented maybe like a dozen drivers or loudspeakers and then talked about them and uh, if you watch a couple of these videos, maybe you watch uh, half a dozen, then you will get more and more comfortable of looking at these figures and figuring out for yourself how that driver works and how will that translate to you. 
and and the, the way for you to get experience is to hear those drivers to hear those loudspeakers and correlate with the data that you have read about them and figure out that for your listening preferences how does that work and and if you are getting your own experience basis then just by looking at a new curve you will be able to tell whether it's going to work for you or not. So here I'm presenting two of the Cube Audio drivers. One of them is this F8 Magus. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Uh, Magus or Magus or Mag Magus. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I will call it Magus. And, uh, and when you look at uh, this driver, uh, let's see, I will use maybe a pointer here. Uh, it's not a laser pointer, but, but on the screen the laser pointer would not work anyway. Uh, so here what we see is, uh, the first thing you should read is that it says measured in an 18 square meter listening room. So you have to be aware that the figures that the Cube Audio is publishing for us they are not uh, anechoic chamber measurement, but real room measurements. So this is different in two ways from an anechoic chamber measurement. One of the ways that it's different is that you cannot directly compare it to those, uh, uh, those readouts that they provide for you that are done in anechoic chambers. And then, uh, so, so that's one thing. You cannot just compare it one to one. And the other thing is that uh, it's in a real room. So it's going to be uh, more useful to you actually to predict how it will behave in your room. And, and the usefulness is uh, particularly uh, important, or I would say uh, that in the base region, the room will change your response a lot. And also in the high frequency uh, range as well, the on-axis response in a room is uh, not that much affected by your room, but the off-axis responses, especially like 60 degrees off-axis, like, like, like the green line over there, that's pretty much heavily influenced by your room acoustics. The, the, the on-axis response, that's when, when the driver is pointing at you directly, that's on-axis. And, and here it says 10 degrees off-axis when you are sitting 10 degrees off the axis of the driver. And 30 degrees off-axis is now you are 30, and 60 is like you are really off-center, you are really... Uh, very, very close to the loudspeakers. Uh, the real life uh, situation, if you are not towing in your loudspeakers, then you are between the 10 degrees off axis and 30 degrees off axis. So that's the normal listening uh, scenario when the speakers are just basically parallel to the wall behind it. And, and when you look at that, when, when we look at both of these drivers for the neodymium magnet version of the 8-inch driver and, and the Magus, it does, for the Magus it doesn't say what, uh, what magnet it uses. I suspect probably a ferrite magnet, but it's very suspicious because it has this kind of cover on it. And then you see uh, this, this type of uh, enclosure used for Alnico magnet drivers, but the website doesn't specify whether it's Alnico or not. And, and then they show their other drivers where they explicitly say it's ferrite, then you can see the ferrite uh, band around the driver and you don't see them covered like this. So I don't know whether this driver is Alnico or ferrite. One thing is sure, it's not neodymium. And uh, here we go. So comparing it, uh, this version to the neodymium version, we really see some major differences. But before we go to the differences, you need to know that these two figures are not directly comparable 
for two reasons. Reason number one, they are measured in different rooms. So this is measured in a bigger room and that's measured in a smaller room. And uh, one thing that you could say is that this is not fair. They are not publishing the data in the same room. How can I compare these two drivers? But this also, uh, uh, this is the re their reasoning behind this was that they recommend this driver for a smaller room and they recommend that one for a slightly bigger room. So that's all fair. So basically what they are doing is they are showing you how those loudspeakers, how these drivers would work in a, in a real loudspeaker cabinet, in a real room, the size they were intended for. So basically when you are thinking about choosing a driver or a loudspeaker for your room, consider the size of your room and on the Cube Audio's website they describe for every model and every driver what size room they are recommending it for. And uh, so that being said, uh, now what we can... Uh, so basically the difference between these rooms, uh, the major difference will be in the bass response. So depending on not just the size of the room, but, uh, but, but the exact dimensions of the room, what kind of uh, room treatment it has, furnitures in it, whatnot, where the loudspeakers are placed exactly. So for example, if you place the loudspeakers one inch uh, uh, away from the position where they are, then you would measure uh, already different uh, SPLs in the base region, like under 100 hertz, you will have differences if you just make slice, slight adjustment in the loudspeaker position. And how big is the difference? Well, just look at that. So these, the different lines show you the on-axis, off-axis. So here, this uh, grayish line, that, that's supposed to be the back line, that's the on-axis response. And you see, like at, at 200 hertz, here we are at 92 dB uh, for that, and also minus 30 degrees. And then when you go lower, then they are starting to diverge really dramatically. So when, when we are here around 160 uh, uh, hertz or so, then on axis we are dropping to 90 dB and off axis we are almost at 100 dB SPL at the very same frequency. So, so based on uh, how you basically tow in your loudspeaker, it changes the bass response at your listening position a 10, almost like 10 dB difference in that frequency. So that's why loudspeaker placement is very critical. This is not just for these Cube Audio drivers. It, that, that happens for every loudspeaker that, uh, uh, that the speaker interacts with your room and just towing in and, and, and slight position adjustments make this big kind of difference in the base. And you see, there's not a uniform difference in the base made, but certain frequencies behave different way. So look at that. So there, at 170 -ish hertz and around that region, if you are minus 30 degrees off axis, you get that tremendous boost. Uh, but now when we are down to 100 hertz, then on axis is higher than uh, that off axis response. So, and, and you see these lines, all of them like squiggle back and forth. So at different frequencies, uh, they have a different uh, uh, room reinforcement. So basically what you can take home from, uh, from I would say every uh, loudspeaker measurement frequency response curve is that the bass response will be totally dependent on your room and on your loudspeaker placement so do not put too much emphasis on it so do not decide based on this region when you decide on a on a driver because uh, those figures if it's done in a in-room measurement 
totally depend on the room size uh, and also the, the loudspeaker cabinet type, etc, etc. Uh, however, what you can decide upon is uh, one, number one, this region, like going like from, uh, from the 200 hertz up to the 5 kilohertz region. Uh, especially like the, the kilohertz to 5 kilohertz region, that's the region that your ear uses to gauge the loudness of the uh, loudspeaker. So basically, that's the SPL you want to read, and that's the efficiency, the average that you have here, that's the actual efficiency of your loudspeaker. And, and, and compared to that, you can compare the 10 kilohertz-ish region, and you can compare the bass. And if all of them are level, then it means that you are getting a balanced sound. If the bass is much weaker than this range, then it means that it will sound light. Uh, and then if you have uh, the, the high frequencies jumping up, then it will sound uh, very bright. So what we are ha having here is that for this Magus loudspeaker, you see that here, like from 1 kilohertz on to 5, uh, 7, over 7 kilohertz, it's like a really nice level, around 90, 96, 97 dB. So that's, uh, you are getting like a 96-ish dB-ish efficiency in that frequency range that really counts for your ear, that where your ear gauges how loud your loudspeaker is. And, and compared to that, it will be a little bit bass shy. Uh, and especially you will hear it like in, in, the, in the upper bass. It, and, and the lower mid-range will be a little bit uh, down. And, and, and the mid-bass will be higher than that. So you are not... Uh, so it will not be a mid-bass shy loudspeaker and uh, it, it will sound pretty good with, with strong bass. It's just the upper bass will have a, uh, and the lower mid-range will have a lack of uh, energy compared to the main, um, main energy of the driver. So that will give it a little bit of, a, I would say like a leanness, but, but also kind of a speedy sound uh, because of that. And, uh, and a little bit of loss of energy. I know this doesn't sound very good, but, but it's still, uh, I would say, a pretty decent thing and, and a pretty good uh, curve, provided that we have a very good efficiency of 96, 97 dB average for the region that counts. And now around uh, 8 kilohertz to about uh, 16 kilohertz, we have a huge hump. So we have like a plus couple dB extra on top of that. So it means that uh, if you have a lively room, then it will sound very bright and harsh. How so it means that uh, it, you need to have some furniture in your room and you need uh, to minimize the, the glass windows in your house. So. So this driver and the loudspeaker that uses it will sound bright in, in a room that's totally neglected from an acoustic standpoint. So what you need to do is just to take at least some minimal care for your room. That is avoid like a glass top coffee table because that will make this uh, nightmare for you. Avoid uh, windows without curtains. If you have windows, have curtains and draw them while you are listening. And avoid uh, cabinets that have glass doors and, and anyway, large glass surfaces. Banish them from your room. Or just put, uh, put a, a curtain in front of them when you are listening to music. And if you do that, then you will be totally fine and you can get a very nice and balanced high frequency from these guys in your room because uh, I, can, I can speak of experience that when you have a hump like that, then you can make it work. 
because you can always dampen your room more. So you can make this uh, work to your advantage, especially when you look at the minus 30 degree response, then now it's much lower. So basically, by towing in a little bit your loudspeakers, you can uh, play around with the, that extra hump and, and make it uh, very lively or more balanced. So, so that's uh, one beauty of, of this driver, and the same is true for the Neo driver, that playing around with the towing, you can make it sound uh, balanced or, or bright. So, so if either of them is your problem, meaning that you do not have enough high energy in your room, or you have too much high energy, with these drivers and, and the loudspeakers using these drivers, with the towing, you can tune in the high frequency energy for you. And that's something really, really good. And I would say that's true not just for the cube audio drivers, but in uh, for most uh, full range drivers in general as well. However, what I would like to point out here that there is uh, two major differences or a couple of major differences between the non-neodymium and the neodymium version. And uh, oh my God, I'm already at 21 minutes. So let's make that the second quick video. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll continue from there. Bye bye.